What's cracking YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. You know who it is. It's your boy Nicholas repping big dogs. Gotta eat fantasy football. We're doing a mock draft today. Best ball style on the draft app. You can download the app or you can do it on your desktop. I did a screenshot on my desktop so the audio is going to be a little shoddy but you can probably hear me. I did that shit straight from my bed. And what a best ball league is for those of you that are not familiar with it is you draft a large team. So I think it's 18 rounds for this particular software and each week it automatically sets up the best starting roster for you. So if you pick 18 players it'll automatically start one quarterback two running backs three wide receivers a tight end a flex no defense no kickers here really standard four points per passing touchdown half point ppr and it does this automatically so basically you draft your team and then you don't do anything for the rest of the season you just come back at the end and be like pay me my monies right that's what i plan on doing at the end of the season but these are really cool so it's the draft app when you sign up make sure you use promo code bdge and you'll get a free entry into a money league when you use that promo code the best ball leagues are really fun because one the draft app is it, they're all paid leagues so it's competitive drafting but you could join leagues that are a dollar that are three dollars that are five dollars so it's very very small amounts of money but it's really good practice because everyone pays so they're obviously drafting real legitimate teams and before we dive in i just want to say anyone that's not already signed up or subscribed to my newsletter you can go to my website right here scroll down to the bottom you'll see a lead form to put your info in i will be sending out throughout the summer one sleeper, one bust, and one tip or trick each week, straight to your inbox. So I'm not gonna be spamming you with promos and sales and stuff like that, just straight value, straight to your inbox. So go sign up for the newsletter and that will be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, we're just gonna dive into this, this bliach. So I'm in the lobby right now. Oh, it just filled up. Cool. So it's the 10 person fast draft and you get 30 seconds of pick. I think there's about 18 roster spots. So it's 18 rounds and the starting positions are right here on the left. You have a quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, tight end flex. And basically of the 18 guys that you pick onto your roster on your total team, they automatically start the best player week in and week out. So you're really just trying to get total points at the end of the season by having your best roster. And this is 10 teams. I have the fifth pick overall. I like the fifth pick in this year's draft um, because you do get one of the elite running backs in Gurley, Bell, Zeke, David Johnson, or Antonio Brown, um, which is cool. So you see Gurley and Bell, and I'm assuming that's, all right, listen for it. It's a beautiful sound of a monster cracking. Okay, so the top four guys went off the board. You see Gurley, Bell, David Johnson, Zeke. Now I'm gonna go with uh, a wide receiver here and Antonio Brown obviously can't go wrong with Brown always producing high level it's fine Big Ben's back all things will be good there now this the settings for this league are half PPR so it's normal standard right four points passing touchdown six points for rushing or receiving touchdown just half point PPR and that's really the only special settings they have to this league which is my favorite settings I do have a video coming out soon of my favorite league settings overall but you see a lot of running backs going off the board already in the first round i haven't done a lot of mock drafts this year my favorite part about the draft app is obviously that these are paid leagues this is only a dollar i put a dollar in for this but it is paid so people are really you know paying for you know to pick good teams and stuff so you're not going to see people starting to pick like rg3 in the second round or anything like that see a lot of running backs going off the board here see we see we had antonio brown hopkins at six kamara fournette hunt Barkley, y'all can see right there. Beckham going all the way down to 2-4. Now, when you're at this point in the draft, you know, there's not too much value at running back left. You know, I do like my boy Devonta. Uh, last year was a down year, definitely to the fact that Shanahan left. So when I'm in the mid-second round, I'm loving a guy like Keenan Allen, especially in half PPR. Coy's a pretty good value there as well. I'm a little skeptical of that offense he's in. Because if he, you know, he's old, if he misses any time, anything like that, I will go with Keenan Allen here. So I have two of my three wide receivers. And again, the cool part about this is since it's best ball, right? You're looking for guys that have high ceilings, right? As well as low floors, but you could take flyers on running backs later. Like I can pick up a lot of rookie running backs and hopefully one or two of them pops off. And this, this software will automatically start the best running back of that week on a week to week basis. So I can draft seven or eight running backs on this team and I just need two of them to perform really well well on a week-to-week -week basis so you don't need to necessarily adopt your team on one strategy okay so you see the rest of the picks here wow Terry kill one 210 i'm a little skeptical about that aj green's dropping into the third round i think that's a crazy value this year 
I like Freeman and Green. I think they're both values at this spot right here. What I'm looking for now is probably to shore up more of my running backs. There goes Mixon. There goes McKinnon. Kelsey, Evans, Thielen. I'm going to go with running back here. I'm going to go with Jordan Howard. Uh, someone asked me on my Instagram what my feelings were on Howard the other day. I'm a big fan of Howard, right? There's all this talk about them bringing in weapons and how they're going to be a much improved offense. Well, Jordan Howard has been a beast in a shitty offense, and they're going to keep feeding him. And of course, he's going to, you know, he's not great in the passing game, but they're already talking about how they want to improve him in the passing game. Matt Nagy last year was using a guy like Kareem Hunt, right? His featured back that can catch the ball as well as run the ball. And I see Jordan Howard as that with as like more of a knockoff version of Kareem Hunt in terms of the passing game, almost like a Leonard Fournette, you know, where he's not a great pass catcher, but he can catch two to three balls a game and that will really help in a, in a PPR format. And if this team improves, you know, like how people are saying that they should, then, the off, then he's going to be even better in this offense. And I'm not worried about Tariq Cohen taking a ton of rushing attempts because he's not the best running back in terms of a ball carrier. But I think Nagy's going to use him and his versatility perfect. And they're going to be able to put both of those guys on the field together, right? To put Tariq Cohen in the slot, put him out wide, put him... Ooh, I wanted Devonta Adams there bad. But um, you know what I'm saying? Just Jordan Howard's going to be a value later in the third because he's, he's already performed up to that standard multiple times this year. And, and it's not like anything bad has happened in the offseason. All right, so we've had uh, a few of the guys I really like off the board there. I was hoping Adams or Thielen fell to me. But again, when we're in a, in a league like this, I like Brandon Cooks here. You're looking for guys with very high upside too, you know, because you're just slotting in a few spots that you need to... Um, really do their thing. So I like a guy like Brandon Cooks, right? Because he'll have a lot of down games for sure. But on those big games that he hits with Brady, he goes off for, you know, five catches, 150 yards, something like that. And that is super valuable in a league like this. Quick intermission. Today's video is officially sponsored. Yeah, your boy's officially sponsored by fantasyjocks.com. They are the home of the number one best, best in the world. That's a fact. That's my testimonial to y'all as a real person. Fantasy football, actually any sport, fantasy baseball, if you need stuff for your, for your league that just kicked off, they got it there. They got these beautiful belts. If any of y'all like followed WWF back in the day, this is exactly the same material, same leather. It's beautiful stuff. Uh, you can engrave all your team's winnings right here for the last few years. You, you can see last year's winner got his name engraved on there. So they got belts. They got rings, they got awesome trophies, draft boards, whatever you need. FantasyJocks.com has that for your league. You can use the promo code TAKE10 to take 10% off your order. And I highly recommend. They are really, really good. There's tons and tons of reviews on all their products. They're really, really high quality stuff. If you're in a 10-person league, right, just have everyone throw in like eight bucks and you've, boom, you've got the belt forever. The rings, you could have everyone throw in five bucks a year and each person gets a ring, man. How cool is that shit? Like every Sunday, you know, if I won my league which I didn't last year, <clears throat> but if I did, I'd be wearing this shit to the bars, to the mall, on Sunday when we're watching football together, just to piss people off. Like this shit, I'd just be like, yo, George, you give me a sandwich? Yeah, give me a drink too. Napkins, please. Like I'd be doing real ignorant stuff like that all day. That's what I'm saying. Have your league chip in a little bit of money along with the entry fee that you guys play with, and you got yourself some high quality gear. Again, fantasyjocks.com. I'll link it in the description. So three wide receivers, two running backs. My thing on quarterbacks and tight ends is I usually stack up running backs and wide receivers. So I'll have at least, you see on the, oh, here it is, like the roster spots. So it'll start counting more once you start picking them. Usually I will get like six or six receivers, six running backs, something like that. And then either quarterback or tight end, I'll take three. Usually I'll take three quarterbacks in case one of them gets hurt. And then one of them is going to be on a bye week eventually, right? So I always want to at least have the quarterback position filled. So I'll take three quarterbacks. I'll usually do two tight ends. Someone I follow on Twitter did a good study about the best ball leagues. Um, did a good article about how most teams that won best ball leagues only rostered two quarterbacks. Which is interesting uh, when you think about it. But I still like rostering three just in case someone gets hurt. And a guy like Cam is super valuable in a league like this. You know, obviously, because that upside is, is just crazy there. So stack Cam with a, a later round guy, you know, and, and I think things work out pretty well. Now, I want to go with a running back here, but I think there's still a lot of value in terms of wide receiver or in terms of quarterback even, too. You know, um, I don't want to reach for a guy like Jay Ajayi, who's a little questionable because they're going to probably draft another guy. I like Alex Collins a lot, too, but I think a guy like Josh Gordon has much, much more upside. So I'm liking the receivers I have here for sure, but we're going to have to shore up the running backs eventually. And it's a little tough drafting these now. Obviously, we haven't seen the NFL draft and we don't know how that's going to go. 
But that also means that you can get some really good value out of some of the rookie guys. If you have guys on your mind that you really like, let me uh, let me creep down here on the running back list real quick. I can grab Rex. He'll have big games. I can grab Tariq Cohen as well in case something happens to either of them. A lot of people are big fans of Rashad Jenny. I mean, Rash Rashad Penny. I was looking at... Uh, I like the... Uh, Deonta Foreman a lot. You know, there's a lot of guys here with very high upside. And if you're taking six or seven of them, right, there's a there's a good, 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 good chance that two of them pop off. So my advice when picking is still pick based off value for the most part, but you don't have to worry about just shoring up your starting lineup spots because it picks it automatically. And when you're picking based off value, always take into consideration floor and ceiling. A lot of people probably don't do that as much when you're in your real drafts, but that's, you know, best ball drafts are really fun to do. So again, these are all cash leagues, so it's fun to just get in there, throw a dollar in and that's it. And if you sign up, I probably already said this in the intro, use the promo code BDGE and you will get a free entry into, ah, uh, there goes Watson. I was thinking about taking Watson there. I love Sony Michelle. Big fan of him. See, I love Robert Woods too. Ah, uh, they took him. I'm going to go with Brady here. Going to get Julian Edelman back. I was looking at some numbers, some splits. You know what? Why don't we look at it right now? I have another good resource, uh, another good video coming on the way for you guys. Uh, my five favorite free fan. Wow, there's a lot of F. Five, my five. Five favorite free fantasy football resources that you guys can use to do research. So this is the Rotoviz Game Splits app. And it basically is just you able to look at any statistics based on any split. Home away, certain players, certain weeks, blah, blah, blah. So you're looking at Tom Brady in games where Tom Brady played and Julian Edelman both played. So that means obviously if he's injured or not injured. Looking back to 2013, let me put some better stats in there. And you can basically put this up to any... You look at Brady's numbers. He's at 51 games. Let me just make sure. Yep, I'd be shoe shopping. Oh, I'm next pick. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. So I'm staying away from these guys for the most part. Ah, uh, some more sexy Rexy. Funches. I like these a lot. Ooh, I actually really, really like Hunter Henry this year. I'm hoping Antonio Gates just decides to lay his old ass on the couch and just decide that for good. Um, I think I'm going to grab Hunter Henry as my tight end one here. Boom. And again, you could pair him with, pair him with, like, I think someone like Eric Ebron would be good this year because if he pops off with Indianapolis, you know, he becomes that guy, then he could succeed highly or Jordan Reed even, you know, a guy with crazy upside um, that you don't need to actually make sit start decisions or wait on him to be healthy. Those are just a few things to keep in mind when you're doing these drafts. But I really need to get going on these running backs. Hey, you could star them off, put them in your queue. I like Duke, obviously, and they show up right here on the bottom right. I like Chris Carson, Tariq, Rashad Penny, Deonta. A lot of Freeman truthers. I, I, for one, love Corey Clement this year. It's really unfortunate that they're supposedly going heavy on uh, on drafting a running back this year. But we'll have to see. They'd be saying all these crazy ass rumors before the draft if they don't go with a, a higher pick running back if they don't take one in the first like two or three rounds Corey clemens is going to be one of my favorite sleepers this year yeah so i'm hurting right now at running back as you could see but you know a guy like duke johnson is going to have his big game same with the guy like tree cohen deonta foreman i'm expecting him to take over as a starter so it's like you know you don't have to have a certain strategy when you go into best ball leagues i like where my team is at right now between brady at quarterback henry at tight end my rb1 being jordan howard and then I have this stack of wide receivers. They're only going to start four, uh, three of them on a weekly basis. But I think you'll get a solid three out of these four guys for the most part. Now is when I could just stack up running backs. So who'd they just take? Jordy Nelson. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to grab, I'll grab Duke here. Fourth highest reception total in the NFL last year among running backs. They bring him call us high, get rid of Crowell. Uh, I would say Duke's probably going to be just as involved as he was last year, if not more. Uh, more scoring opportunities with this offense moving the ball more. So yeah, Duke is Duke is a great is a great asset to anyone in any sort of PPR leagues. So back to this. Uh, Brady has 51 games played. This is from 2013 to 17, and you could filter any of these things. You can make it longer. It goes back to 2000, and you could look at all these different types of stuff. So 51 games played with, 25 without, and you see um, more than three fantasy points a game more. More completions, less interceptions, more touchdowns, more passing yards. So obviously, he just plays a lot better with Edelman in the lineup than without. And I really, I think Edelman's going to be uh, a a nice steal here uh, late round. Where is he going? He already got picked, I'm, I'm assuming. Sometimes when you're this early in the season, the ADPs are so messed up that you can really steal players late. Okay, it's my my turn. Who went since last game? Oh, no running back. So like that. Oh, there's Edelman. He just went 8-8. See, that's such a steal. Like, that is unbelievably 
Fucking thief-like. See if we have any values here that I really like first. Ooh, I like Aguilar a lot. I'm going to take a flyer on, on Carson. He was one of my babies last year. He was one of my boys. I love that guy. Unfortunately, it did not work out. Got hurt, but I'm expecting him to be bike. Look at this. Look at this beast. Like, are you shitting me? Y'all might have forgot about how beastly he was last year. He was so good. I love Chris Carson. I love him. Out of respect, I just pick him on every one of my teams. Yeah, so Brady with Edelman. think Edelman's going to be steal. I think Brady forms better this year than he even did last year. Because he had a few down games, but I think he didn't have his like little safety valve. Now they have all these weapons back. Eh, definitely Gronk is going to be back next year. I can't... These... Rumors that he's not going to be are just out of control. That they're going to trade him. Like I feel like the people that say shit like that just need to get fired. It's really out of control. Here, Garcon, Emmanuel Sanders. Man, there's some good values here at wide receiver. George Kittle, big sleeper. Big tight end sleeper this year. Finished really strong with, with Jimmy G. Let's look at his last three games. Kittle, where you at, girl? 515 receiving yards as a rookie. I believe that was second most among all rookies behind Evan Ingram. Look at the last three games. Took him a while to settle in with Jimmy G, but 4 for 52, 3 for 42 and a touchdown, 4 for 100 against Jacksonville, the Rams. Good defenses, too. I think Kittle's going to be a uh, a nice sleeper this year. 24 years old, Jimmy G, that offense going to be rolling, 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 rolling. What? Oh, man, they're taking all my running backs. Rashad Penny's off the board, Tariq Cohen, Ags. I want Deonta Foreman bad. I feel like he's one of those guys that... If you get him in a best ball league, there's like a decent chance you win. Uh, like I think uh, basically like 30% of the teams that had Alvin Kamara last year won on draft. Um, so those are the guys you need to hit on and hopefully get lucky. But I would say when you're drafting, don't draft a lot of the same players. Like I made that mistake last year where I had maybe like eight or ten of these draft leagues. And the thing is you don't have to look at them at all. You draft them and then look at them in January when the season's over. But I drafted a lot of the same guys, right? Like you might have a couple guys you like, but I would definitely suggest taking a couple guys that you also do not like. My man. Uh, because, you know, you're going to be wrong as much as you're going to be right when it comes to fantasy football. So basically just diversify the portfolio, diversify the revenue and make sure that, you know, it's kind of all over the place. If you ended up drafting Kamara in like one of eight leagues, at least you hit on, hit on that one. But I would say diversify, pick based on value, not just on players that you love all the time because shit gonna happen. What else? Not a lot of upside here left at running back. I think Royce and uh, Corey Clement will probably stay on the board for a while, so I could probably look elsewhere right now. I have my first quarterback. See, there's so many good still like options. Like I think Patrick Mahomes might be a perfect pairing with Tom Brady in this in this sort of league. Yeah, like I like Brate because he's heavy touchdowns, you know. So in the weeks that he scores a touchdown, he's probably going to be my starting tight end. So I could look at that late. Let's see what receivers we got twerking with Parker. Like that. Randall Cobb is a really interesting pick this year as well. I'm gonna go with Parker. Fuck, I missed it, and they picked fucking Freeman. God damn it. All right, whatever. I would have went with Parker there. You know, obviously with Jarvis Landry gone, there's going to be a lot of openings. They signed some shitty wide receivers. Oh, yeah, they did give me Royce Freeman. Whatever. So let that be known. If you're in a fast draft, so there's fast drafts and slow drafts. The fast drafts are 30 seconds pick, but the slow drafts are, I think, eight hours a pick. So it's like that. that's a good one for, you know, you do it throughout the summer. Um, if, if you can't get a time where everybody could do it together, I know it sounds crazy, eight hours, but you just do it from your phone and it will alert you when your pick is up. It's pretty cool, actually. But make sure if you're doing the fast drafts that you put guys in your queue that you actually want and make it ordered out in the order that you want. Because, uh, my home just went zam. Because, obviously, if the 30 seconds goes, which is quick, there goes your pick. Ooh, I like that rhyme right there. Ooh, Devonta Parker might still be available. Devonta Parker. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tavis and... DD man, this wide receiver core in Jacksonville will really be fucking up. I like Randall Cobb. I think he was a big winner in the uh, free agency draft. I mean, the free agency summer. Like, you get rid of Jordy, so now he's the de facto number three. Like, who else are they going to be using at number two unless they draft someone, right? You have Aberderis, who made a couple splash plays last year, but they've said nothing about wanting to use him. Cobb's still on that big contract. I mean, he obviously hasn't played up to it, but it's not like he was... Yeah, I mean, maybe he's been kind of terrible, but I really... I'm trying to stay away from rookie wide receivers just because for them especially, a lot of it depends on the situation. I mean, running backs too, but you have no idea where they're going. And for the most part, you don't know how good they even are, rookie wide receivers. So running backs, you usually have a good idea of which guys you like, which guys you don't like. I think I'm going to grab my second quarterback. So someone took um, Pat Mahomes. 
I'm actually thinking about taking Trubisky, to be honest with you. I think he has some good upside this year. See, you got to be careful, though, too. You got to think kind of down the line, right? If you're taking a guy like, uh, I don't know, like Frank Gore, right? He goes, eh, I guess that's not a, that's a bad example. But like a veteran running back who has a chance of losing his starting job as the year goes by. Or, for instance, same thing with Tyrod Taylor, right? Like, you let, you're like, oh, he has heavy upside, right? Oh, no, did I just miss my pick again? Sick. Guys, I'm the worst, sorry. Corey Clement, whatever. You guys are like, oh, he has heavy upside, but there's a very decent chance that Tyrod Taylor is not the starting quarterback by the end of the year, right? So you're missing, like, eight games from him. When you need the guy who's on your pick, damn, and he took break, I want a break. When you need the guy on your team to be starting, that makes any sense to you guys. So we got six running backs, five wide receivers, and just one tight end and quarterback. And there's 18 rounds, so I have... Four picks left. I'll just fast forward. You guys don't have to listen to me talking anymore. Okay, so we had a little tight end run there. Let's see, Joku, Doyle. Ah, this kind of sucks. I wish I didn't let the time run out and got Breit instead of Corey Clement. Let's see. All right, so we grabbed Philip Rivers last round. Now, this is where, you know, I got three picks left. So I usually just like to... I'll look at my roster and kind of say, like, is there injury-prone guys? Do I need to supplement any positions? And I would say... Running back is probably where I need to be because I have a lot of unknown guys here, you know. So maybe you know you could take it a more upside guy, or you can take a guy like Legarrette Blunt, who is probably going to get a lot of the early down work in Detroit plus the the goal line work, you know. So he's a guy who's going to have his touchdown weeks. So I would look to grab a guy like that as opposed to someone like Devonta Booker, who might be supplanted and not even have work by like week four. Probably grab another wide receiver here. Um, Deshaun Jackson is a, a guy that you would like to have in a league like this as well, because obviously the upside is fucking crazy. Let's see. I kind of like Torrey Smith here in Carolina as their deep threat, too. So let's go with Torrey Smith. I have one more pick. I'm thinking about using it on a quarterback. So my ideal options would probably be... I'm going to go Lamar Jackson here. I think he's got so much upside as a fantasy quarterback this year. Like, so much. Come on, Lamar! Fall to me, baby! One more pick. You can do it! Whoa, what do you mean it's not my turn? It literally is my turn, bro. I have to refresh this shiz. Come on, my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's the squad. We got Brady. Now, I missed out on a few of the guys that I drafted, or the time ran out, so you got to be careful with that. They have fast drafts and slow drafts, so the fast drafts go 30 seconds. Brady, Rivers, and Lamar Jackson. I love Lamar Jackson as an upside guy. Like I said, I usually go three quarterbacks because in case someone gets hurt, like you never want to take a chance and not have the quarterback position filled, even on a one-week basis, right? Someone gets hurt, and then you have a bye week or something, so I like that. Plus, Lamar Jackson has like Cam Newton-type upside where he can go off for a 40-point fantasy game. The running backs definitely where I took a little bit of a hit. I got Jordan Howard, which is great, and I backed him up with Duke, which is also good in PPR leagues, but the rest of them are kind of high upside, high risk plays. Carson, Deonta Foreman, Royce Freeman, Corey Clement, LeGarrette Blunt, things like that. The wide receivers are super, super strong. I took Brown in the first round. Keenan Allen, Brandon Cooks, Josh Gordon. I love this combo right here, the Cooks- the Cooks Gordon because you're not going to have to depend on them on a weekly basis. You have guys like Brown and Keenan Allen who are super consistent and you pair them with the high upside guys of Cooks and Josh Gordon. And I think you're filling out a really good three wide receiver spot. And then we grabbed Hunter Henry and Jason Witten. I love Henry as a, not even a sleeper, but he's super undervalued at his ADP right now. He's going to be taking over as a starting tight end spot this year. And Jason Witten just for good measure. That's the squad. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you like the mock drafts. I know like I enjoy doing them and plus they're easy for me to make because I just, you know, I don't have to like script out a bunch of content i just kind of pop off ideas in my head so leave a comment below if you want to see mock drafts throughout the uh throughout the summer and if you do let me know which type of mock drafts because i know last summer we had some guys asking about two quarterback league mock drafts i can do standard i can do full ppr half ppr all those different ones so let me know if one if you like mock drafts like if you like seeing them i know a lot of people do them so they might get boring um and two if you do want to see them let me know what types that's going to be it for today so i hope you enjoyed if you did please just scroll down a little bit give the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you're new we'll be helping you with your draft prep all the way through the season hopefully bring home that that ringling and uh, that's it so like it subscribe subscribe to the newsletter on my website again all this stuff will be linked below and follow me on social ah! social I'm, mar I'm married to the game baby see y'all later